Good afternoon and welcome to the Cathedral Basilica of St. James. Today is Thursday, the eighth week in Ordinary Time. Please join in singing our opening hymn, number 958, Healer of Our Every Ill. Number 958, Healer of Our Every Ill, verse 4. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brethren, acknowledging that we are in the presence of God, let's recall to our minds our shortcomings and failures, and ask God's pardon. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, we pray that the course of our world may be directed by your peaceful rule, and that your church may rejoice untroubled in her devotion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, like newborn infants, long for spiritual milk, so that through it you may grow into salvation, for you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house 
to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were no people, but now you are God's people. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Beloved, I urge you as aliens and sojourners to keep away from the worldly desires that wage war against the soul. Maintain good conduct among the Gentiles so that if they speak to you as evildoers, they may observe your good works and glorify God on the day of visitation. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a sizable crowd, with Bartimaeus, a blind man, the son of Timaeus, sat by the roadside begging. On hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he kept calling out all the more, son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called the blind man, saying to him, take courage, get up, Jesus is calling you. He threw aside his cloak, sprang up, and came to Jesus. Jesus said to him in reply, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man replied to him, Master, I want to see. Jesus told him, Go your way, your faith has saved you. Immediately he received his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. <coughs> the context of today's gospel reading is that, uh, as it is mentioned in the gospel, that Jesus is going up to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. While Jesus is going, there are a good number of crowd followed him. And why did crowd followed him? See, to understand this, we need to understand the socio-economical cultural situation of the Jesus of uh, Jesus time of the Palestine because whenever people go up to Jerusalem especially the rabbis they don't go alone they go with a band of disciples and on their way they teach the disciples or the crowd who followed them about uh, the, the scriptures. And now, it is also customary that when the pilgrims walk the roads, unlike the black tap roads that we have today, they have all the guard roads. What I mean by a guard road is a guard road is paved with stone and mud. Sometimes if rain comes or wind comes, the dust comes out and you will find the ditches here and there. It's not an even, it's a, basically it's paved with the mud. As they walk on the guard roads, the, let me not put beggars, let me put it in a more refined way, the less fortunate people, the homeless, the don't haves, uh, those depending on the generosity of others on a daily basis, they would sit on their either sides and uh, uh, solicit for some kind of help. It's also the thing, while they walk on the roads, on either side of the roads, the tombs will be whitewashed. You remember Jesus telling the, the scribes and Pharisees, you whitewashed tombs? I'll also tell you why they whitewashed the tombs, because if a pilgrim wanting to go to Jerusalem walk on the dead tomb, they would be ritually defiled. In order that the pilgrims not to be defiled ritually, they whitewash the tomb so that they don't walk on that. That's the reason why they whitewash the tombs. Even to this day, uh, in certain parts of Asia Minor, they do the same. They do the same. And so, while Jesus is walking towards Jerusalem, not only his disciples, a great crowd followed him. Because he is, by then he is known as a miracle worker who multiplied the bread, who gave, uh, who healed the people, who cast out the demons, whom authorities were growing suspicious and criticized about. So, 
altogether he has a name. This Jesus of Nazareth is something, someone who is a very different. And so this Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, he heard about uh, Jesus. He had faith in Jesus. And so he believed that he is the Messiah. And you remember the uh, book of prophet uh, Isaiah, chapter 28, verses 19 speaks that the, when Messiah comes, he gives sight to the blind. He's a blind man. So, see, if I am a blind man, I think from my own perspective, not from your perspective. So as a blind man, as a Bartimaeus, what I thought, I remember scripture saying that when Messiah comes, Messiah would give sight to the blind. So he started shouting. Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. Naturally, those people who are with Jesus, they said, shut your mouth. They shunned him. The more they shunned him, the bigger he cried out. Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. All with one, with one hope that his cry will be heard in the ears of Jesus so that he would give him attention. That's it. And Jesus heard. So the people said, courage, get up and go. The master is calling you. Jesus is calling you. You see the response of the person. He sprang up, threw his clock, went to Jesus. That was the faith he had in Jesus. And that's why Jesus asked, what do you want me to do for you? And he said, Master, I want to see. He did not tell him, if you wish, you can make me see. No. He says, I want to see. He knew for definite that Jesus can do this miracle for him. And he said, I want to see. Jesus said, as you wish, go. Your faith has saved you. Because Jesus has seen that faith in this person. And he said, so, hey, well, Go on your way. He, remain, he received his sight and he thanked God and he followed Jesus immediately. Well, brothers and sisters, in our daily life, I would put it this way. By genetically human default, we are most of the times with our pride and prejudice, we always, we are judgmental. Whether you agree or not, I am. If you are not, at least I am. Let's be more human. When we look at somebody, when we see something, or when we have a kind of an experience, we already form kind of perceptions. Oh, this guy is like this. Oh, this man is like this. This place, oh, that's bad. We, we always had a, a kind of perceptions. We had our own biases and we are more judgmental. That's why I put it the word, genetically human default. Everyone, everyone. We are so prejudiced, so biased, we are judgmental. And we are blind to a lot of realities. And maybe we are physically, we can see, spiritually, we are utter blind. Spiritually, we are utter blind. Maybe at times, because we are so blind, even if Jesus is walking beside us, we just ignore him. We pay a deaf ear to him. We don't consider him. Maybe someone whom we know may, might tell us something good. We will say, don't preach to me, get lost. We may not say these harsh words, but inside, the inside person will be telling the same thing. Maybe you want to appear very polite and very dignified and very learned. You would say, hey, thank you. I'll talk to you later. Right? That's what we do. We are blind to so many realities. That's why as Jesus gave sight to this Bartimaeus, let's ask Jesus, Lord, I want to see. I want to see the truth. I want to see the real reality. I want to see you. See you in others, in me and in others. 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Just as Bartimaeus cried out to Jesus in faith, let us cry out to the Lord, bringing to him our every need. For the church, may faith, hope, and love guide all who proclaim Jesus as Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may the Holy Spirit help them humbly and faithfully fulfill their roles as civil servants. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, may they like Bartimaeus, experience the healing touch of Jesus. Let's pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, may the love of the God dwell in our hearts and in our homes. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, especially Carmen Medina, for whom this Mass is being offered, may the faith they had in this life bring them into the fullness of God's presence for eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord <laughs> Let's pause for a while and pray for our own personal intentions. Heavenly Father, you continue to work signs among us. Hear the prayers we offer today through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the wine and work of our human hand, it shall become a spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away from iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his church. O God, who provide gifts to be offered to your holy name and count our oblations as signs of our desire to serve you with devotion, we ask of your mercy that what you grant as the source of merit may also help us to attain merit's reward through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim.
you are indeed holy o lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew falls so that they may become for us the body and blood of our lord jesus christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread giving you thanks said the blessing broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me the mystery of faith Therefore as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you Lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the holy spirit remember lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with francis our pope robert our bishop the order of bishops and all the clergy religious and laity remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy welcome them into the light of your face have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed virgin mary mother of god with blessed joseph our spouse with the blessed apostles and all the saints saint james saint philip neri saint john henry newman who are pleased you throughout the ages we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your son jesus christ through him and with him and in him o god almighty father in the unity of the holy spirit all glory and honor is yours forever and ever to the father in the words of our savior gave us our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptations but deliver us from evil Deliver us Lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress and anxiety as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior Jesus Christ for, for the kingdom, kingdom the power, power and the glory are yours now and forever Lord Jesus Christ who said to your apostles peace i leave you my peace i give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever amen the peace of the lord be always with you and with your spirit let's offer each other a sign of peace peace be with you peace
the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, who opens our spiritually blinded eyes. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Communion hymn is number 705, Father, we thank thee. Number 705, Father, we thank thee. Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you feed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go forth in the peace and joy of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You all have a beautiful day. Our closing hymn is number 794, God Who's Giving Knows No Ending. Number 794, God Who's Giving Knows No Ending, verse 2.